Hello you wonderful people and welcome back to the Crested Gaming Lounge. In today's video I will revisit another MMO I played in the times of old. Just as with many other MMOs I started playing it when I had a break from World of Warcraft. You've heard this story like a million times by now right? The name of today's MMO is Terra which is apparently short for the exiled realm of uh, Arborea. I had no idea that Terra was actually an you know abbreviation for a longer title, but that's apparently what it's called. Uh, it was released in Korea by a game developing company called Bluehole Studio. It was released in 2011 over there. Uh, it was later also released in North America and in Europe in May of 2012, after it had a beta period since February the same year. Uh, the game is being published by Gameforge for the people in Europe. Right, the game premise. Uh, there is, it is always hard to give a game premise when it comes to an MMO. So I'm just going to give you a short, uh, a shorter version of the background story and why we are fighting in this MMO. Uh, there were two beings called uh, Aaron and Shara, two titans of unimaginable power. They met in a formless void. Somehow Aaron and Shara fell asleep and began to dream. As they slept, the exiled realm of Arborea began to manifest itself around them. Today, both Aaron's and Shara's bodies form the two continents the exiled realms of Arborea is made of. As both titans continued to sleep, their dreams came to life. Out of this dream, the first twelve godlike inhabitants of Terra emerged not long before a terrible war amongst them took place. Yet Aaron and Shara remained in their dreamlike state, and simply out of their imagination, the first mortals came to life. The mortals and gods fought each other in a great divine wars, leaving most of the gods dead, imprisoned or otherwise diminished. Even some of the mortal species got wiped out. However, others emerged, and today most of Terra's races form an alliance, fighting menaces beyond their world. So that is sort of the, the you know, sh short and sweet of the background story of Terra. And we move on to races very swiftly. There is a total of seven races in Terra. As per usual, they're all humanoid in some form or another. They are human! As we have mentioned before, there's usually always some kind of human race in any MMO. And there is not much more to say about these humans, really. Uh, in this game, they wandered over millennia over the world and came in contact with every other race in the world of Terra, which made them perfect to bring the other races together, apparently in some kind of alliance. Castanic are horned humanoids that uh, refuse to be chained by their dark past. This makes them very cunning and fierce. Aman. The Aman is a dragon-looking humanoid that used to be warrior slaves to the giants of Terra. And as they free themselves, they are now very optimistic about the future. High Elves is a race that is eager to prove themselves worthy allies in the alliance that the humans formed. And they try very hard to overcome their own xenophobia. Popori or f uh, former animals that have been awoken by the race called Ellen to be protectors of nature. They still have many of their animal instincts from what they once used to be. Ellen. The Ellen were made by the goddess uh, Elinu as immortal spirits for one purpose, and one purpose alone, and that is to keep nature safe at all costs. Baraka. The Baraka is a descendant from giants and is a towering statue-like humanoid that even though their massive and seemingly threatening appearance are actually very peaceful and tend to focus more on intelligence and magic. Classes or roles. There is a lot of classes in this game. There is a total of 13 classes in Terra. What I find very useful in Terra compared to many other MMOs is the fact that each class gives a very short description on what they are best suited for and also a small graph uh, of parameters such as complexity, tanking, offense, support, uh, also your key abilities. So you get a very 
uh, it's short, but you still get a very good uh, a good summary of what you can expect from your class. The classes are as follows then. There's Warrior. This is a tank class that focuses on evading damage and having sustaining damage on the enemy. Mystic. The Mystic is a very powerful, supportive healer with a very high complexity level. Lancer. The Lancer is your typical sword and board tank, but instead of a sword, they use a massive retractable lance. Even though it's a typical mitigate tank style, it still has a very high complexity due to the fact that you have to time your blocks to save on stamina. Reaper. The Reaper is a mid-range DPS only class that is uh, exclusively available to the Ellen race. This class is very mobile with very high burst damage. The Slayer. The Slayer is a very complex DPS spec that uses mobility and the overwhelming power of their greatsword to knock down any foe, big or small. They're a complex but also very well balanced DPS class. Gunner. The Gunner uses a massive cannon-like weapon to overwhelm the enemy with a barrage of AoE damage. Berserker. The Berserker, uh, like the Slayer, has a very high burst damage, but is far less complex and focuses more on bursting down multiple enemies. Brawler. The Brawler is a mitigation tank, just like the Lancer. Compared to the Lancer, however, the Brawler keeps aggro on its target by pure overwhelming and relentless rage and damage. Sorcerer. There is not much to say about the Sorcerer, it's very much like any other mage or wizard-like class in other MMOs. Ninja. The Ninja, like the Reaper, is also available only to the Elin race. Uh, it's also focusing heavily on mobility, but instead of burst damage, they focus on sustained damage and evasion. The Archer is very mobile. Uh, use range attacks to greatly uh, control the enemies with poison and stuns, etc. Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is another DPS spec that is very focused on burst damage and mobility through leaps and jumps. And lastly, the Priest. It's a very standard healer class along the lines of similar such named classes in other MMOs. They focus on restoring health and supporting, but can also do small amounts of damage. Character creation. As we have mentioned before, this could be very important to some people and not so important to other people. The character creation in Terra is very similar to many other Asian MMOs that many of you have probably played before. They have some preset options and then you can change that up with fine tuning in the form of sliders. What I did realize as I did revisit the game is that you cannot change your body type at all in any regard, such as height, build, etc. It seems to be uh, only the facial features of the character that can be changed, which in my opinion is a big disappointment. I know I have stated before that I'm not a big fan of too many sliders and options for character creations, but I think that there should at least be a bare minimum for body modifications, such as height and overall body type. Start leveling areas. Just like any, just like in many other MMOs, the start leveling zone in Terra serves to tell you a bit about why you fight and uh, some of the overall story of the world. You also get introduced to the main mechanics of your class and how to best use them in combat. And just like in most other MMOs, the start zone is shared with every other race and class, nothing too specific for each race. I would say that the start leveling area in Terra is very flat and in all honesty very boring. Uh, with what I mean with that is that it does not introduce anything that other games haven't already done in the past. Quests. I would say the quests in Terra work very much like many other MMOs out there. It's a typical run over to a quest giver with an exclamation mark over their heads. They give you a task such as gather 15 bear asses and then you go to those said bear asses, bring them back to the quest giver, not much more to it. One thing I have noticed with the quest in, in Terra 
is the fact that it's very streamlined and gives very little leeway to venture outside that stream. Uh, there are some very beautiful areas that were used for leveling in the past that now is very much unused. Unfortunately, this is very common in MMOs that's been around for a while. Gameplay or combat. We usually mash those together, as you know, in these videos. The gameplay in combat in Terra works like most other MMOs, uh, with the exception that it does not work on a tab target combat system, but rather an action combat system, which means that you aim your cursor using the mouse and attack by either left clicking, which is generally your main ability or filler that has no mana cost or energy cost. Right click is generally a secondary ability that takes mana or energy slash stamina to use. Uh, in the case of my character, it's a dodge ability to avoid incoming attacks. You also have a bunch of activated abilities on your action bar that costs mana and have a cooldown. These abilities can be chained together by pressing space bar uh, when prompted. This makes them more effective than if you would use them uh, by themselves. Something else that bothered me is the fact that there is, uh, there's load screens in very strange places at times, uh, which unfortunately makes the gameplay a bit choppy. It just splits it up a bit. They have cutscenes or load screens where they shouldn't be. Graphics. Graphically, the game is really showing its age, unfortunately. However, since they got a 64-bit update not that long ago, uh, a lot of things has become a bit smoother, graphically speaking, uh, and that is a nice gust of fresh air, really. However, I have mentioned this uh, in many of my other reviews, the graphics do not have to be super awesome to make the game feel beautiful. And that is still very much true for Terra as well. Bugs and glitches. However, the graphics do lead me uh, into the bugs and glitches category very smoothly. As I do see some of those uh, throughout the gameplay, you can unfortunately still see bugs and graphical struggles here and there uh, as it stutters from time to time. This is something that can lead many people to be discouraged from playing the game at all. Right, we've come on to audio, guys. The audio and music in Terra, I would say, is nothing spectacular and does not really make you stop and listen when leveling, like I used to do in, for example, Allods Online and World of Warcraft. Difficulty and pace of leveling. Difficulty, I would say, is relatively easy. Uh, I will say that it does take a while, however, to get into the action combat system uh, if you've only played the classical tab target combat before. Uh, however, in my opinion, Terra has one of the best, if not the best, action combat system I have ever come in contact with. Pace of leveling, I would say, is a bit too fast for my liking, uh, at least in the early levels. It does slow down a bit as you get closer to max level, but I still think it is way too fast. Right, we have reached my overall opinion, guys. My opinion of the game is that even after the 64-bit update, I am still very uncertain about how I feel about this game in general. I do like that the game seems smoother since the update, but I also feel like they need to focus on other aspects in the future, such as, for example, letting you choose more freely your own route to level up. As it right now, I very, it, it, it is very ineffective to quest, for example and doing dungeons is far more superior. Like far, I, I would put this in context, it's far more superior than in many other MMOs. Uh, for example, if we take Guild Wars 2, for example, that I have done a review in the past, uh, you could easily do questing and exploring maps, for example, to level up, and that works just fine. In Terra, that's not really the case. It's way more superior to do dungeons. Uh, I do know that in most MMOs today, the goal is to get to max level as fast as possible. But I, I, the thing is, I, I think that both me and many other people still enjoy the journey to get to max level just as much as getting to that goal. So, my conclusion for Terra is, 
I think you for sure should try it out for yourself, if nothing, just for the amazing action combat system. Uh, and if you have played the game in the past and stopped because you had problems with the 32-bit version, uh, this, I would say, is the perfect time for you to return. If you did like the game or even love the game in the past, but the 32-bit version made problems for you, now you should definitely return. Uh, I have seen a bit of a spike in uh, player activity as well, so I don't think you're going to have a problem finding people to play with, even in the lower levels. Guys, I also want you to tell me in the comments below what your opinion of this game is. And also maybe what type of content you would like to see on this channel in the future. I will not stop with these though, you, you know that. There will be more MMO reviews or first impressions. There will be more MMOs coming up in the future that I haven't touched at all. Which will be completely, you know, first impression videos. These are more of, you know, I revisit old games I've played in the past. And guys, don't, don't forget to boop that like button if you liked what you saw. And if you like me, please consider becoming a part of the lounge and click that sub button. And also tickle the bell so you can see when I upload more MMO videos in the future. I do also stream over at Twitch TV, by the way. So if you want to check that out, it will be in the description below. So until the next video, guys, I hope you have a great morning, day or night, wherever you might be. Have a wonderful day, people. Bye-bye.